Good evening, Parkingham and Valley. Dr. Barbara Russell here. I'd like to share an update on the part of the school district regarding our virtual voyage. And a couple of the topics that I would like to discuss tonight include what's happening with teaching and learning, and also some of the details that we spoke about the last time. How are we, rec how are we recording attendance, grades, what will the end of the marking period look like? We'll also talk about some of the really important upcoming events that typically occur at the end of the school year and some of our thinking around what will happen for our students. We'll talk about the calendar and how that looks for the end of the year for our students. Many of you have asked about your children accessing our buildings to get some of their personal items. We would, we would like to arrange that. I'll talk about that as well. Kindergarten registration, summer programs, community ed, some of those odds and ends, and I'm happy to address any questions or comments that you might wanna share along the way. But before I really get into our focus areas this evening, I do want to extend wishes for your health and wellness, your family's health and wellness, those close to you. These truly are unprecedented times for us. And with that has come some some real challenging um, times as well. And, and I know that for some of our families, school in this way has become somewhat stressful. And I wanna emphasize again, I don't want school, we don't want school to be the thing that stresses you out or stresses your children. If you need to reach out to teachers, building principal, or a school counselor, please do so. We really want to partner with you in this very new way of doing school. So as of Thursday, April 9th, Governor Wolf extended the school closures. He mandated that schools will be closed for the rest of the year. And I think a lot of us wondered if that was coming. It was formally announced last week on Thursday. So we will continue with our efforts to introduce new learning to our students, and we call that continuity of education. That's the phrasing that we're using. We're making every effort to remain connected to your children at the elementary level with some morning meetings or some video conferencing and some work in ELA and math, and at the secondary level um, with some resources and recordings that might support students moving through some of the learning activities and the learning assignments. So we'll continue with that approach through the end of the year. We'll make some adjustments. Um, however, we do hope to move our students forward to the degree possible um, between now and the end of the school year. Feel free to pose questions throughout the experience. And um, I'm just noticing that apparently I'm presenting in the wrong way. And so, sorry about that. I apologize for the technical difficulty. Um, maybe that gave you something to giggle about, I don't know. But at any rate, uh, as we move through some of the topics, feel free to post questions and comments, and I see lots of you are sharing some thoughts. I do have an assistant here this evening who will share with me some of your questions. I'd like to address as many as possible. And thanks for joining. I really appreciate that. We will once again post this video, this brief message, along with a slide deck that provides you something to reference. So feel free to look at that after we're done tonight, or if you didn't get a chance to tune in, you have that to access. So I talked a little bit about new learning that continues for all of our students. We talked about asynchronous learning versus synchronous learning. A lot of the learning, particularly at the secondary level, is asynchronous. Our teachers are connecting with our students via a Google Classroom, and they're up learning, they're uploading, excuse me, learning activities. And sometimes they're sharing audio recordings of their voice, video recordings of themselves, modeling, problem solving, for example, maybe even conducting some live video conferences in an effort to provide guidance and some level of direct instruction to their students. So while some of the work is independent, maybe some of it's also collaborative with some peers. It's also engaging with the teacher to again realize some of the new learning that's expected between now and the end of the year. We continue to think about our students 
that are eligible for specially designed instruction and how we best meet their needs. And I'm hoping that you continue the conversations with your child's special education teacher or one of our special education supervisors. So we wanna do everything we can to support our students in this new way of doing school. And, and it's not easy for everybody. We continue to wanna to connect with every student. That means we wanna see that each of our students is logging in each week to connect with their teacher or their teachers and is participating in meaningful assignments. If your child has an issue, maybe with their device, please know that we are scheduling another technology help grab and go. Tentatively, April 24th is the date where if you have submitted a help desk ticket, um, or are in need of something regarding your child's device, please know that we plan to schedule an opportunity for you to get what you need or um, obtain the repair or a functioning device April 24th. More to come on that as we get a little bit closer. Again, it'll be grab and go. So you won't be coming into the building. We'll maintain social distance, but we'll try to get you set up so that your children can continue what they're doing. Attendance, grading, and report cards are three topics that have come up around what's happening in the teaching and learning category. Really with respect to attendance, what we are most concerned with is that our students are connecting with their teacher, with their teachers, and engaging in the assignments. Attendance looks a little bit different because our students may not be connecting with their teacher every day as they did when we were attending school in the physical setting. However, we still wanna make sure that we are making a connection with every one of our students, that they're receiving the, the opportunities for the learning activities, the learning assignments, and they're able to respond and move through those. And if they are not connecting, we are making personal phone calls to those families, to those students, to help to understand the why and figure out what we can do to make sure that we're connecting. We recognize that at the elementary level, for families that have one or more elementary children, this can be a very challenging way to do school, particularly if you are also caring for family members and maybe you're also trying to work from home. We recognize that's, that's not easy, it can be very challenging. Please reach out to your child's teacher and have a conversation about what might work best for you. Again, we're partners in this effort on this virtual voyage, as we, as we call it. Third marking period concluded on the 7th. Hack will open for access to secondary level report cards on April 23rd at noon. So you'll be able to get a sense of how your child or your children have done during the third marking period. As we embark upon the fourth marking period, Teachers will grade and they'll consider completion as well as the accuracy of what our students do as part of the learning activities, the learning assignments. And ultimately in the end, they'll receive a letter grade, but the fourth marking period for our middle school students and our high school students will only contribute 10% to the overall final grade. First second and third marking periods will each contribute 30%. So we're gonna weight those marking periods a little bit differently because of the different circumstances our, our students are moving through. No final exams for our secondary level students or high school students, so um, maybe you can do a cartwheel or two, that's great, and, and hopefully a relief for them. At the elementary level, we will be moving away from our typical standards-based reporting system of four, three, two, one, and instead, provide you with a narrative about how your child has done, how your child is progressing in the areas of ELA, reading primarily, writing, and mathematics. And, and hopefully that will give you a different sense of the sort of progress your child has made as we conclude the school year. So we have lots of upcoming events. As I mentioned the last time we spoke in this way, uh, spring is a busy time of year. And I know one of the big questions for our community is what's going to happen with graduation. 
and what will that look like for our seniors? So we have a couple of ideas that have developed and I think there are some other ideas on the part of school districts in Montgomery County. And right now, Dr. Moss and the high school administrative team are planning for a virtual graduation on June 5th. So we will showcase all of our graduating seniors in that way. And if we are able to hold a graduation ceremony, we have that tentatively scheduled for August 11th. And I say tentatively scheduled because we're not sure, we're not 100% certain we'll be able to come together in a large group even that late in the summer. However, we recognize how important that ceremony is to our graduating seniors and we want to do everything we can to provide them with that ceremony. So we'll have a virtual ceremony and some of these virtual ceremonies are pretty neat and a really nice way to showcase our students. It's not the same thing as the in-person ceremony. However, we can recognize our students on that date and then plan for a ceremony that we can hopefully conduct on August 11th. So stay tuned for more, but right now that's what we're planning. And hopefully you feel good about that plan. Senior awards will again most likely be conducted virtually. You'll hear more about that from the high school and the prom. The prom is also another big event that our students really look forward to at this time of the year. And right now, the high school administration is suggesting that and has reserved a date in August, August 7th, to hold the prom for our students. So August 7th, again, tentative, all based upon the governor's orders and what's happening with the pandemic. August 7th would be the prom. August 10th would be graduation rehearsal. August 11th would be the graduation ceremony. So keep those, date in mind, those dates in mind and stay tuned. We'll, we'll continue to update you and keep you posted. And, and again, we know that as spring progresses, we'll know better whether or not it's truly feasible to come together in the way that we like to celebrate our seniors. But hopefully that gives you some peace of mind and a sense of where we're headed. We're also really working on other ways that we can showcase end of the year traditions like concerts and art shows and trying to be creative with what we might be able to do in a virtual format. I'm going to shift back to some academics and talk a little bit about SATs. We did receive some information today from the College Board and they do have some plans to afford students opportunities to take the SATs and what they're planning is to provide weekend SAT administrations every month through the end of the calendar year beginning in August. Now again, these are tentative based upon where we are with the pandemic and what's safe for our students. However, they are making plans to accommodate students recognizing the significance for many of them to take the test. There will also be some other dates, and I've put this in the slide deck for you to reference. If you're interested in seeing some of the detail, there is a website link, and there's also some of that, that content that describes their plans moving forward. So I mentioned access to buildings. Several of you have reached out and requested the opportunity to come into the building and retrieve some of the personal items, or your child would like to retrieve his or her personal items. We would very much like to accommodate that. I am going to wait until we get through April. And again, we see where we are with the stay at home order out of Governor Wolf's office and consider early May if it is a safe time to structure opportunities for students to come into the building and they will be, um, they will uphold all of the different steps that we're expected to take to mitigate the spread of the virus, we want to be very careful with the health and safety of our students. And right now is not a good time in my view, so we're going to postpone that. We're going to put that off till a little bit later this spring. However, we are working to figure out when we can accommodate that request on the part of many of you. So please stay tuned for more of that, and we will get to that when it's, when it's safe for our students to be able to leave home and come into our buildings for that purpose. 
the calendar, let's talk about the end of the school year. There's been a couple of shifts. We were originally scheduled for an in-service day on August 28th. And we also have some snow days or inclement weather days built into our calendar. We had early on before Governor Wolf closed schools for the rest of the year, shifted that April 28th day to June 2nd, which is the new date of the primary election for the primary election. Since that time, we've made another change. And again, we've updated our calendar. It will be published on the website. It's also, there's an image of it in the slide deck that you'll be able to access. Here's the bottom line. The last day of school for students is June 8th. And I know that's what they want to hear, but that's when the school year is over. So look for some of the details. If you're interested in those, there will still be three half days at the end of the year where teachers will have brief opportunities to bring closure to this, again, very different way of doing school. However, the school year concludes on Monday, June 8th, and it's rapidly approaching. Kindergarten registration uh, typically is, is completed during March and April. We were able to move through the registration process in one of our four elementary schools. The other three schools are working to organize an online registration system, if you will, and there will be more information forthcoming. We know that we have many kindergarten families scheduled with appointments, so we have a sense of who needs to register and how many students will be welcoming in the fall. However, we do need to collect that paperwork and have some conversation with you. So look for additional details around the kindergarten registration process, and we would really like to be able to move through that as best we can in the next month or so. So more information coming from elementary schools on that. Summer is often a very busy time in the school district and on campus. We have ESY, which is extended school year summer programming for our students. We have summer school programming for our students. And we also have LIFT, Learning is Fun Together, which is a summer program for our elementary students. And <clears throat> while right now we're tentatively planning for these programs, we are, we are far from certain that we can run them. So because these programs serve the purpose of really trying to remediate, reteach, review, close gaps where children may have them, we are thinking about, as a plan B, how we might offer some of this additional programming, this supplemental programming, into the new school year maybe before and after school. So as we get a little bit closer to the summer, as we're able to observe a little bit longer the behavior of the coronavirus and the cases of COVID-19, we'll know better what's possible. So typically we have those summer programs. We're not sure we'll be able to run them, but we are thinking about how we continue to provide that reinforced instruction to our students. We also typically have lots of community ed in the summer. And again, we're tentative about committing to some of the, the summer camps or, or the types of activities that are part of community ed that bring lots of students together in one place. We're just uncertain that'll be something we'll be able to do this year. And in lieu of some of those, again, a plan B, if you will, a backup plan is that we're thinking about what we might offer in a virtual setting. So stay tuned for some of the ideas that will be coming out in a new brochure. Um, we're gonna test with just a couple of the activities that often really engage our students, our younger students, and we wanna see if there's something we can do to maintain that engagement in some really neat areas um, virtually because that's where we are right now. We still are providing food to families that are in need of food. Again, that happens Monday, Wednesday, Friday through our food service department at both Schwanksville and the high school from 9 to 11 in the morning. You can simply drive right around the bus circle. You don't get out of your car. You don't have to come into the building. No questions asked. You let us know how many children you have and you'll be provided the number of meals that would support your family. And if you come by on a Monday, you get meals for Monday and Tuesday, breakfast, lunch. 
And if you can buy on a Wednesday, it's again, two meals for you. So um, please take advantage of that if that would be supportive of your family right now. Additionally, we have the community volunteer group, PV Power Packs, that is also supplementing the food that the food service department distributes in that grab and go format on Mondays. As far as school district work on a broader scale, if I sort of back away from some of the classroom experiences of our students, we tend to have lots of committee meetings and we, we work really diligently to engage our community in some of the conversations that help move us forward. Just as our board meetings have moved to a virtual platform, our committee meetings are doing the same. So look for updates on our website where you can see a link, you can access a committee meeting, they're open to the public. And please um, feel free to do so if you're interested in a particular topic. We have a, um, a finance committee meeting that was originally scheduled for tomorrow night that has now become a special topic board meeting. We have a policy committee meeting next week. We have an education committee meeting coming up. So you'll see some of those on the district calendar, which is located right on the home page, along with the link to access. So from the comfort of your own home, you can tune in if you're interested in some of the topics. Please feel free to do that. And one of the other things that I wanted to mention, because again, I know it's on the minds of at least some of us, are the capital projects that we had planned for this summer. We have three different categories, if you will, of capital projects. We have one category, which is referred to as an ESCO. Uh, it's an energy savings um, project, if you will, that was occurring itself. And we did part one last year and had every intention of completing part two this year. Still in conversations about what will happen there. However, that is something that we're having some conversations around and trying to figure out what might be best for the district at this point. We also talk about the annual capital projects that the district completes in its efforts to maintain the buildings, to upgrade the, upgrade the buildings, to update aspects of the buildings that come with their age and their use. And again, we're looking at that list very carefully as we approach um, what could be a, a really uncertain budget for us. So we're being very careful and thoughtful. And we've also have, we have our athletic improvements as a third category of capital projects. And we'll talk more about that in the next couple of committee meetings, um, the special board, the special topic board meeting, as well as safety and operations upcoming later this month. And, and again, we're being very careful with the expenditures at this point in time based upon what's happening in our economy and what might be best for the school district. So stay tuned, there will be updates on each of those three major categories of capital projects. So that's really the bulk of some of the focus areas I wanted to touch upon. I don't know if there are questions that I can address while we're still connected. I'm happy to do that. My assistant here is gonna share some questions with me. Thank you for sharing questions. Can students be assigned homework at the beginning of the week and have until the end of the week to complete? Interesting question. And actually I've learned from some of our students as well at the high school in particular, they like that methodology as opposed to the schedule that we have set up right now has them engaging with different subjects different days of the week but not necessarily obtaining all of their learning activities and learning assignments at the beginning of the week but i will absolutely discuss that with principals and our curriculum team it's not the first time i've heard it so i appreciate you bringing it up other questions okay so i'm going to look at my my next one okay is it possible we may start the 2020-21 school year earlier than planned to make up for what we missed um, it's actually an interesting question. We really, we're not obligated under the law as we otherwise would be in a, in a regular school year. This is far from a regular school year to make up the days. We're not obligated to do that. And whether or not we would start the year early is also an interesting question that I would need to have some more conversations about. We haven't talked about that. So there isn't a conversation that's been initiated around that. Um, but I'll certainly follow up 
and hope to provide you with some additional reasons for or against taking a step like that. We do have high school sports that tend to start in August and are typically up and running during the day through several weeks in August. Um, so that comes to mind early on. However, I appreciate the idea and I'll look into it and follow up in the next community update. What are the requirements for elementary students with regards to specials? That's, a, that's also a very good question, so thank you for these questions. Really, the focus at the elementary level is on English language arts, so reading and writing, and mathematics. That's the primary focus, those two subject areas. And within ELA, our teachers are trying to incorporate some science and some social studies as part of what our students are reading or writing about. Special area teachers are trying to provide students with a taste or a flair of that special subject area experience. However, um, there shouldn't be a lot of homework. There shouldn't be a heavy homework load. It really is an opportunity to hopefully take a break from some of the academic content. It is not intended necessarily to be weighted as heavy right now with time commitment or really even in a grading or performance evaluation as ELA and math. Will there be a time to return library books and Chromebooks at the end of the year? Again, presuming it is safe for us to come together for the purpose of doing that, yes. We'd like to plan for students to be able to access the building, the buildings for the reasons that they may need. However, we do want to be very careful about um, the timing of that relative to what's happening with coronavirus and the pandemic. But yes, um, do students need to do more than turn in assignments to receive credit for attendance? Actually, what our teachers are looking for is a connection to see that our students are online and connecting to them in the Google Classroom. So hopefully that answers the question. It is really about our students learning, what they, what they end up realizing as part of the activities in the assignment. It's also about making sure we stay connected. I know that many of our students are missing school. They're missing the social interactions with their peers. They're missing the interactions with their teachers. You know, we're really fortunate to have some wonderful and strong relationships between our teachers and our students. And what's really important um, about that right now is the social and emotional well-being of our kids. So we really want our kids to connect with our teachers and to connect with their classmates if the setting is conducive to do that as we, as we monitor their social and emotional health along with everything else that's going on. So it does matter that our students connect with what our teachers are hoping they actually get out of the Google Classroom or um, when they're offered a video conference. End of the year celebrations for fifth grade. Still uncertain about that. I know that is one of the activities at the end of the year that's extremely important to our students transitioning from elementary to middle. Same is true for our eighth graders preparing to transition to the high school. We're just not sure. We would love to be able to bring our students together for this reason at the end of the year. We recognize how special that is to our kids. We need to give it a little bit more time to determine whether or not it would be safe to do that. But we are absolutely thinking about some of those very special activities that we know make school special for our kids. So stay tuned. How does a virtual graduation work? Well, we've seen some some examples of how it works and I'm, I'm aware that a lot of colleges are moving in this direction this year in particular and <clears throat> it would still involve some voice from Dr. Moss, our board president, Mrs. Lofton, myself and also an opportunity to see a full screen view of each of our graduating seniors with maybe some comments or some information about them. Um, there's some creativity that can be a part of it and we have an opportunity to actually develop that in the way that would work for our graduating seniors and our community. But it really is an opportunity to showcase our students across the screen, one at a time, with a little bit about them 
that also recognizes they've completed these 13 years of school and are preparing for that next step, that next chapter. Well, I'm hoping to continue with these messages about every two weeks if there are updates and meaningful information to share with you, so I hope to have some more information about that the next time we come together. Uh, will National Honor Society relax its volunteer requirement hour, hours given a lack of service opportunities? Wow, that's a wonderful question. And again, not one that I've been posed yet, but I will absolutely take to the administration. We'll talk about that. And again, I'll be prepared or our high school principal will be prepared to provide you with that information. That's a good one. Thank you for sharing that. That's all I have. Okay. All right, so with that, I will let you go. Um, I want to keep this, this presentation brief and hopefully informative for you. Look for a recording of it on our website as well as the slide deck for reference. And please, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly, your child's teacher, principals. Um, we want to work with you and support you in this endeavor in these last weeks of school. And I look forward to when we come together again um, in this setting as well as face-to-face. -face. In the meantime, please stay well. Take care.